In one of your practical activities, you are asked to explore Snell's Law. We can use uh, this semicircular prism to do just that, to find out what happens to light as it passes through this, the way in which its direction is changed. We'll be looking specifically at how the angle of incidence is related to the angle of refraction. Let's have a look and see how we can do this. So here's the equipment all ready to be used. First of all we've got a power pack and I've got that power pack set at 12 volts. Doesn't matter too much whether it's AC or DC. And over here I've got the ray box or light box. One thing that's important with this is if you can see the, the lens there, uh, just in the front of the light box, uh, that lens should be adjusted so that these this is parallel. Now if I move this you can see that I can change the angles there and what we need to do is to make sure that that's all coming out at right angles to uh, or coming out uh, with the right, with the light all parallel. So I'm going to turn the this knob here. You can see the knob there. I'm going to adjust that so that it's all parallel. Turn that tighten it so that those that light is all parallel. Now <clears throat> the next step is to position the. Uh, is to position the semicircular prism right on the center line here. Now I've got this positioned on a paper protractor and that protractor will, will help us to measure the angles. So I'm going to carefully move this so that the uh, line goes right down the center and is in line here. Now this is quite important. You need to take a, a, a reasonable amount of time to get this right. And it's rather difficult, so I hope I've got it right there now. I've got to try and not move it as I uh, create an angle of incidence, an angle of re uh, refraction. So I'm going to use this single slit here. I'll position that in the ray box and that will create a, a ray as you can see. Now I need to make sure that that's aimed straight at the centre. So there it is there. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to move it around so I get various angles of incidence. Now it doesn't matter too much which uh, angles you choose. Uh, it's just a good idea to choose a range. So um, I could choose 15 if I like. So there's 15 degrees and I'm making sure that that's aimed right at the at the center and I hope I've got it correct there now right so <clears throat> I'm just going to put a little mark here as to where the ray comes in and I'm going to put a little number there number one now this is my first angle of incidence from here to here and later I'm going to re, uh, reconstruct that, that ray. Now over here uh, I'll put a little mark here for where the ray emerges so I can measure the angle of refraction. I'm going to put a little one there. Now this is the angle of refraction. It's the angle between the normal and the refracted ray. Over here the angle of incidence is the angle between the normal and the uh, incident ray. So I've got my first bit of data there. Now I'm going to move that and as I said it doesn't matter too much where I move it to and to a different angle. I'm just going to get a, a, a range of angles. So again I might just line it up with 30, it doesn't matter. So making sure that it hits the centre, goes right to the centre there and that it's on 30 up here and it's not quite on 30, I'm taking as much care as I possibly can to get decent 
data. Right, so that looks as if it's on 30 there. So I'm going to put 2 there. So this is my second ray. And over here, I'm going to put 2 and a little mark here on the paper and on the paper here for the 30. I'll move it again, maybe to 45. Doesn't matter, as I said, which, what angles I choose. You can choose a, a range of angles, but again, I've got to make sure that it is going to go right to the centre. At the moment, that's not hitting to the centre, so I'm still moving, moving, moving. Um, okay, so... Move it around just a little bit. I haven't got that 45, that doesn't matter. I'm going to put a little mark there. That, as you can see, is one, one two, three, four, 44. So this is my third angle of incidence. And over here, I'm going to put a little mark here for three my third angle of refraction. I'll move it again this time, maybe I'll move it round to 60, give myself a wide angle. Again, making sure it's going straight to that centre. Okay, it's sitting, sitting there on 60. It's landing there right on the centre, so that's good. Okay, so I'll put here another little mark for ray number four. Over here, emergent ray, angle of incidence, looks as if it's right on there, so that's number four. And further around, maybe I'll go to 70, see what happens. Okay, I've got it on 70 there now, and it's heading right for the centre. No, okay, now it's on 70, still not going to the centre. So that looks about... Okay, so I've got it there now, so I'll put a little mark there for ray number 5, 70. And over here, I'll go to make a little mark here, ray number five. So that's given me a set of data. And what I'm going to do now is actually uh, trace or retrace those rays. So I'll take this away and I can take away the light box, turn off the electricity. I'm now in a position where I can retrace the rays, so I'm going to put my ruler here and go here from the one up there to the centre, and that will be a trace of the first incident ray. And similarly for the other ones. <laughs> Now here you can see where I'm required to to record the data. So I here will be the angle of incidence and here will be the angle of refraction. So what I need to do is to take the data that I've got here, have a look at the angle here which says uh, it's a little bit more than uh, 15, uh, so it's uh, maybe 15.5, so that is my first angle of incidence. My second angle of incidence is uh, just on 30 and I'm going to put here uh, degrees as the units and again here for refraction will be the units. Now uh, then the next one will be 40, uh, 40, close to 43, just a little bit less. Uh, maybe I could make that 42.8, point, point 
give me a slightly more accurate result. Uh, this one here, I've got pretty well precisely on 60. And then uh, the next one here is 70. So those are my angles of incidence and my angles of refraction. refraction. Uh, now over here for the first one uh, is slightly more than 10, so maybe 10.3 10 10 or 10.4. Right, so I'm going to write here 10.4. And uh, next is uh, round about uh, 19. 19 and a little bit, so maybe 19.4. And after that is 25, 6, 7, 27 point perhaps 4 again. Then the next one is uh, 30. Five, just a little bit more than 35, so 35.2 perhaps. And finally, the last one there is uh, 30, 39 point something, maybe 39.5. Now, uh, the next thing that it says here is uh, can you manipulate the data to get a straight line graph? This is after we've drawn a curve, well, graphing these results, okay, graphing uh, the angle of incidence against the angle of refraction. And that is done over here. So now that I've recorded all of the angles of incidence and angles of refraction, my next job is to graph the angles of incidence against the angles of refraction. So over here I would put uh, angle of incidence. And I would put in here the units degrees and down here um, angle of refraction and again degrees I should put in here a title now <coughs> What I've got to then do is graph these numbers. Once I've done that, I sh will probably get, as it suggests here, a curve. So you draw a curve connecting the points. Then it says, can you manipulate the data to get a straight line graph? Fill in col columns three and four in the table to provide this data. So the data to go in here will be a sine of the angle of incidence over the sine of the angle of refraction. So I would need to get out my calculator and work out the signs here to go in there. Now here I can put the ratio of the sine of the angle of incidence to the sine of the angle of refraction. In other words, I write in here sine I divided by sine R. I'll work this out and get the average. What I expect to get is these numbers here being very, very close to each other and that will be a measure of the refractive index and this is Snell's law uh, that will be a, a measure of the refractive index from each of these sets of data and what I can then do is compare this average to what I need to do over here and what I need to do over here is to graph uh, sine 
uh, of the angle of incidence to the sine of the angle of refraction. Now I don't need to put units in here. Why? Because these are ratios. They're just numbers. Now what I'll expect to get here will be some sort of straight line. And then says here to work out the slope of the graph. Now what that means is that I've got to take, um, pick one point on the graph, so I'm going to assume that there's a, a straight line. Maybe it's like this. I don't know. You've got to do that. Then I would pick a point on here. I will, I'm assuming that it's going to go through zero, the line of best fit. Okay. Uh, I'll get the line of best fit head that towards zero, then take a spot on this where it might be easy to pick the number, so one like that. So I can measure the angle of int the sign of the, the rise, perhaps a point like that. So then I can measure the rise, this one here, that's the rise, over the run. In effect, I'm getting the, the tangent or the slope. Well, it's not really the tangent, but it's the slope of that line, and that's what I would write here. Then it says the refractive index of the perspex. That is the same as the slope of the graph. And this is the point of the exercise that we're trying to find the refractive index. The refractive index is the ratio of the sine of the angle of incidence to the sine of the angle of refraction. That was Snell's law. That is, that that number is a constant for any particular transparent substance, a transparent substance like perspex. Now, it would be different if we were using glass. It would be different if we are using diamond. They each have their own refractive index. What you can then do is compare your results with what might be expected. So having a look over the page, it says discuss the shape of your graph of I and R. So if you've got a curve, you might say something like this uh, shape indicates that the, the relationship the mathematical relationship is not clear. Discuss the shape of your graph of the manipulated data. Well, assuming that you've got a straight line, what you could then say from this is that the sine of the angle of incidence is proportional or directly proportional to the sine of the angle of refraction. Then it says, compare the value of the refractive index of perspex from your average values of the table to the slope and with that found on the internet. So what you've got to do here is go to the internet to find the answer there. And this one comes from your graph and this one comes from your table. So that's basically it. And that should put you in a position where you can uh, fill out this paragraph and summarise a conclusion or write a conclusion. So you're right, when you are writing your conclusion, you should be able to say something about the ratio sine i to sine r, what did you find? And you should be able to say, relate that to Snell's law that this is something that uh, Snell worked out from his experiments that this ratio was a constant. I hope you find satisfaction from your results.